What's up guys, welcome back to brand new Undisputed video. I just want to say really quickly, a uh, huge thank you for the support on the videos. Uh, it's been tons of fun. I feel like, you know, the, the weight has kind of gone off me where I feel like I was forced to try and push any old thing out. Whereas now I'm just able to play the game, have fun with it. You guys seem to enjoy the videos and and yeah, that's that's kind of all I ever wanted. You know, I was never like going to be the, the next Mr. Beast. Uh, it was just kind of like, I enjoy doing this and if people enjoy watching it, then fantastic. And uh, I've had a lot of fun with the game. And yeah, thank you for the support. And I'm glad that, you know, people are still around. Obviously, you know, I'll, I'll still be covering all the news and all the new stuff to come and any rumours of fighters that may be coming in the future. So I'll still be keeping you guys updated. Uh, but it's great that I can daily upload, maybe even double daily upload um, and just play the game. And it is it's fantastic. Now, I recently done a top five fighters for beginners because obviously I was lucky enough, thanks to Still City Interactive, to play the game early. I've been playing it for about a week now, whereas everyone else is only on their first day. So I've been very lucky in that regard. So I made a top five fighters for beginners. Seemed to be helpful. And I thought well, another good one to do kind of for the underbelly of the roster, if you will, would be a top five hidden gems. Now, of course, in three months time, I may redo this video. And my list may be completely different. But for now, I think these five fighters are honestly real, really overlooked and already quite hidden gems of the undisputed roster. Now, if you guys know boxing, these guys may not be hidden gems to you. These are hidden gems in the sense of their overalls, in the sense that they are overlooked. And when you, people come up against them, they tend to think it's light work. And it is not. Some of these are names you guys will know. Some of them are, you could even argue, big names. But the overall kind of makes them look not worth using. Like they're going to be a pain to use than a use. And especially because all I'm seeing at the moment is people using Crawford, Sugar Ray, Robinson, uh, Tyson Fury and Muhammad Ali and bragging about wins when using Tyson Fury which so without further ado let's get into my top five hidden gems of Undisputed. So we're going to start in the cruiserweight division with 80 overall Lawrence Akoli. I mean right now he is a current world champion but only at 80 overall and right now in his division he is only higher rated than two fighters, Lyndon Arthur and Patrick Rockall. You, in his division, to compete with him, you have Enzo Macronelli, Roy Jones Jr., Johnny Nelson, Rocky Marciano, and Alexander Usyk. So he is being seriously overlooked. But let me tell you, as someone that used him just off a whim of knowing who he is in real life, he is fantastic. His style is a boxer puncher, so he is useful pretty much everywhere. And like I said, he is an 80 overall. None of his stats really leap out to you. 79s and uh, low 80s for his stats. If we go into a deep dive of his stats, again, there might not be many things that jump out to you. But for an 80 overall, this is almost what you want. You want someone like this that is 80 across the board. 83 movement speed. That gives him the ability to fight off that back foot. 86 accuracy. Fighting off the back foot is going to be far more accurate than you may think. With an 82 left hand and right hand power and an 82 jab and straight aren't in combinations with a 1-2 whether it be on the front foot on the back foot or side to side with directional shots has ne is never going to be easier with someone like Lawrence Okoli it's 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 always going to be easy with him because he has such even power across all hands and with a little bit over an 82 inch reach he is massive in this weight class Johnny Nelson comes close. He's about four centimetres behind him in terms of reach. But everyone else is at least four to five inches behind him in reach. You are going to be able to jab and move if you want. And once you've worn your opponent down with those long lengthy body shots and those long lengthy head shots is when you can attack the inside. If we go across to his one trait, he has lightning hands, which has reduced the damage of punches thrown by 3%, but increased punch speed by 10%. So while his power may be lacking, which personally I don't agree with, his power in real life is yes somewhat inconsistent, but I do believe he has a has a pretty nasty right hand. Right now is a pretty standard 80 overall with a pretty standard power, pretty standard defense and everything across the board else is pretty standard. People have really not been looking twice at this man, but he is someone I highly highly recommend. And if you do decide to use him after this video, like I said, Start those rounds on the outside. Use those jabs and straights and combinations. Mix it up on the inside to body and head and then break away. You will just realise how big this man is compared to the other cruiserweights. Now this one is a proud one for me. This is someone I knew would be a hidden gem 
before the game came out. And that is in the lightweight division at only a 79 overall, Dalton Smith. His fighting style is an outboxer and he has no active traits. So right now you're relying on just stats and 79 overall. People are not looking at him more than once. But an outside fighter always has the risk of being a hidden gem because outside fighting is so useful if you know how to do it. However, if we look at his stats, we can see one thing excels above them all and that is speed and then health and then strength. If we go across to his stat breakdown, we can see there are some pretty low ones here. Block health is a 75. Stamina recovery is only a 78 and uppercuts are a 75 as well. Pretty low stats. But for a 79 overall, he has got 80 or above on all health stats. He's got 80 conditioning, 83 agility and movement speed, as well as an 84 punch speed and 83 counter punching, 86 right hand power compared to a 77 left hand power, 84 straight, 81 power punch, and an 80 body resistance, as well as a 78 chin resistance. Now, in this lightweight division, you do, of course, have the likes of Crawford, who is crazy fast and is going to be able to outbox every, anyone, as well as Sugar Ray Robinson. Insane. But you bring Dalton Smith up against Arturo Gatti, Mickey Ward, Jordan Gill, John O'Carroll, even Ricky Hatton and Josh Taylor, and even Ryan Garcia. If you know how to outbox, you are going to outbox all of them with Dalton Smith because I guarantee you people make the same mistake they did when I used Dalton Smith, and that is underrate him and expect him to go down easily because they just see that 79 and they don't think much of it. Dalton Smith is a fantastic outfighter. You can use it in both loose movement and non-loose movement to outside fight. He has great combinations when someone gets inside your range. Don't be afraid to mix it up with him. His chin resistance may be low, but it's still a 78. It is one of the lowest in the division. But definitely don't be afraid to mix it up on the inside of him. Use his relatively weak uppercuts to set up his more powerful hooks and straights and then break away. Using that weaker jab followed up by that more powerful right hand due to his orthodox stance. Remember in real life he's only 13-0 with 10 knockouts. He's still got a long way to come but for now he is a real sleeper pick. Don't sleep on him. If you go up against him, trust me, the person has either gone random pick or... Or they know how to use him. Do not underrate Dalton Smith in Undisputed. Now we're going to go up another weight class. Just up to welterweight. With someone whose overall is relatively lower. Only an 82. But yet has very good stats. And three impressive traits. That of course is the destroyer Connor Ben. Juice comments aside. And I know they're going to be getting made because of this. But Connor Ben in this game is seriously dangerous we can see his stats there fighting style boxer puncher 82 overall we see three traits but we also see 81 health 82 stamina 84 speed 85 strength 82 defense and 81 ha if we go to the breakdown the health is pretty standard stamina is good pretty standard 82 condition 81 endurance all good across the board 88 punch speed 85 movement speed but then we get to the strength 84 power punch, 85 uppercuts, 86 hooks, 87 jab, 87 right hand power, 80 chin resistance, 82 body resistance, and 80 block health. Now already for an 82 you're thinking, Jesus Christ, that is a lot of high 80s for only an 82 overall. And that's because the outlier ones, such as heart and health at 81, they hold him back to that 82. Conor Ben can fight on the outside, but he can also mix it up on the inside and he can mix it up well, which brings me to his traits. And this may be a bold pick, but I can almost confidently say a good Conor Ben player will be able to not only beat everyone in terms of Crawford, Sugar Ray Leonard, Sugar Ray Robinson and Canelo, but will also be more versatile than a good 80% of that welterweight division. Not only does he have the stats to fight on the outside, he has the traits to fight on the inside, which brings me, as I said, to his traits, where he has Bomber, Bounce Back, and Rock'em Sock'em. Bomber, increased damage of power punch, straight punches thrown to the head by 25%, and increased chance of knockdown on power punches thrown by 50%. So a straight power punch increases damage by 25% and you also have the increased chance by 50% to knock them down. Bounce back is when gassing out, so this is upon entering the gassed state. It increases your stamina regeneration by 20% until no longer gassed. And then the final one is Rock'em Sock'em, which is increased damage of uppercuts thrown to head by 
20% and increased day's chance on uppercuts thrown by 10%. So if you're on the inside and you're able to throw a power uppercut or a standard uppercut, a hook and a power straight, there is a chance that you may kill somebody in that ring with Conor Ben. I seriously don't think his overall does him justice. I think he is correctly scaled in terms of his overall, but to give him these three traits, as well as the speed and strength to fight on the outside and the traits to fight on the inside, Conor Ben is a serious sleeper pick and he can do some serious, serious damage. That's why I keep telling people that I talk to, always check your fighter's fighting style and always check their traits. Those, in my opinion, are more important than their stats. Now, this next fighter actually spans across three weight classes, believe it or not. Bantamweight, featherweight, and lightweight. Sporting an impressive 84 overall across all three of these weight classes. And I know, 84 overall, you're thinking, come on, that's not a sleeper. I have seen people pick lower overall fighters due to their name base than this fighter right here. Every time I have fought someone who knows how to utilize this man's speed, I have lost to when using higher overall fighters every time. And that is Jorge Linares. His fighting style is a boxer puncher and, as I said, an 84 overall across all three weight classes. In bantamweight, he is a bully. At featherweight, he is extremely competitive. And at lightweight, he's a little bit outmatched because you've got the likes of Crawford, Sugar Ray Robinson and some tough dudes in there like Josh Taylor. But he for sure can hold his own in that division. We see what he excels at off rip. Speed 88, health 85. If we go across to his full stats breakdown, his health 86. His body health 85. His head health 86 again. Stamina all across that 84 and 82 mark. Speed Agility, movement speed, both 87. Then punch speed, accuracy, and counter punching, all an 88. To have punch speed, accuracy, and counter punching all near that 90 mark is a dangerous man. If you can counter, you will be able to land three to five punches if you're smart with what combo you pick before someone else can land one. His strength lets him down a little bit because his hooks and uppercuts and power punches are pretty low, but his left hand and right hand are 84 and 85, as well as his straights being an 86. Guarding is an 84 and his chin resistance being an 82 and his body resistance being an 81, which means he can take a hell of a shot. And to be honest, in the lightweight division, for example, you've got Ryan Garcia and Ricky Hatton there. Ricky Hatton will attack the body. Ryan Garcia will most likely go for those lead head hooks. He also has two traits, one of which we haven't seen before, which is rubber legs. Upon entering dazed, while dazed, movement speed is reduced by 10%. That is obviously a negative for Jorge Linares. But then he also has lightning hands, which reduces the damage thrown by 3%, but increase the punch speed by 10%. So this man has got some seriously, seriously fast hands across all of these weight classes. And people see him as a sleeper pick in the lightweight division. But then if you go to the bantamweight division, he is number one there. So that is where you're going to want to remember the name Jorge Linares. And you're going to want to utilize that man's speed across the board. Some of his stats do shift ever so slightly between weight classes due to difference in weight, difference in speed of his weight. But across the board, he is an 84 across all of these weight classes. And the final fighter for me in my five hidden gems, at least right now, like I said, it's only the first week of release. So there's a good chance that in a couple of months, my list could completely change. This fighter is in two weight classes, the light heavyweight division and the cruiserweight division. He is definitely viable in both, but for now, we're going to focus on the light heavyweight division where he is at his highest, which is still only an 80 overall, and that is Lyndon Arthur. His fighting style is a boxer puncher, and as I mentioned, his overall is an 80. Nothing crazy and no active traits. Some pretty standard overall stats of 80 vitality, 78 stamina, 82 speed, 79 strength, and then 81 on both defense and heart. So across the board, nothing off rip that would jump out to you except for maybe the 82 speed. If we go across to the actual main breakdown, again, there might not be much that jumps out to you. One thing that jumps out to me right away is only a 74 left hand power, as well as only a 77 endurance. Now the rest are half decent. You've got 79 conditioning, 79 stamina, 79 head health, but an 82 body health. But then we've got the speed. We've got 82 agility, 86 movement speed, 81 punch speed, 82 accuracy, and 80 counter punching. 
So right away, despite being a boxer puncher, for me, I'm seeing the style I'm going to want to pick, which is never standing still. If I do stand still, I'm going to want to trade in the pocket very quick with his best shots, which are the hook, the uppercut, and the straight. So for me, that would be leaving the pocket with a straight after landing perhaps a hook followed by an uppercut or an uppercut followed by a hook. When I use Lyndon Arthur, I like to use that big, nasty jab. Now, in the light heavyweight division, you, up, you go up against Canelo, Enzo Macronelli, Patrick Rockall, and Roy Jones Jr. The only one, believe it or not, that really poses crazy threats to Lyndon Arthur in the light heavyweight division is Roy Jones Jr. He's much longer and taller than Canelo, so you can avoid Canelo for 10, 12 rounds, whatever you may fight. But, of course, if he hits you, then you may get hurt because Lyndon Arthur only has a 79 head health and an 82 body health. Enzo Macronelli, you're going to have a relatively competitive, rangy fight. And Patrick Rockhall, you run the risk of him, of his low chin stats, as well as his low stamina stats. So Lyndon Arthur, for me, the light heavyweight division is being relatively abandoned. But when people are at light heavyweight, everyone's going Roy Jones. At cruiserweight, it feels like no one's looking at Lyndon Arthur. But even despite being a 79 overall at cruiserweight, he's still a legitimate pick. He's still bigger than Rocky Marciano, who's a much stronger man. And of course, yes, you do have to run the risk with Lyndon Arthur of making sure you have your guard up at all times. As normally when I use someone like Lyndon Arthur, someone a bit longer, I like to have my block down most of the time. But I recommend with Lyndon Arthur, you do keep that guard up. His, his guarding is a 79 and his block health is an 81. That's more than enough to take a, a viable amount of shots against any light heavyweight. Of course... We, I, I often tend to exclude Roy Jones because he is just so overpowered in this game. He is just a absolute force in the light heavyweight division. He's a force in every division. But against most, if not all of the light heavyweights, Roy Jones will reign among them all at the top. But Lyndon Arthur is a legit sleeper pick in my opinion. A few people I've seen have mentioned about how when they used him he was incredible. But there's a few people, like I've mentioned on this list that I've spoke about in the Discord, that people just have not used yet. And I highly recommend going out and using these. You may lose your first fight with them. You may lose your second and third fight with them. But I guarantee when you learn them you'll realise they are a legit viable pick. And that's what I've experienced with, with all of these fighters on this list. I've won some, I've lost some, but I've held in more than you would expect for their overalls or their lack of traits or their lack of stamina, their lack of health, whatever they may be lacking, they are not as bad as their stats dictate. And I want to give two quick honourable mentions. The first honourable mention goes to the second lowest fighter in the game, which is Hopi Price, who is an outboxer at 71 overall. His stats are not great. He does not have any traits, but he is definitely useful in an eight-round fight. I don't recommend trying to take him 12 rounds, but in an eight-round fight, don't look at that overall and not use him. He's definitely fun to use. He's got solid speed in that jab with his speed being a total of 77. And he's a lot of fun to use. The second and final honourable mention is Sean Porter. I was going to put him in this list, but he is an 83 overall. But I have seen people just not use him. He is tons of fun. He's really good to use. He's a boxer puncher. An 83 overall. He's got 84 stamina, 84 defense. So he can just keep going and grind people down. He's also got the right hand bomb trait, which increased the chance to knock opponent down with right hooks by 15%. But it does decrease the chance to knock opponent down with the left hook by 5%. But still, Sean Porter is tons and tons of fun. Those are my top five hidden gems with two honorable mentions. I hope this video has helped you guys out and, you know, hopefully you will maybe want to go and use a couple of different fighters that I've mentioned on this list because, you know, maybe you want to learn them. Some of them are tough to learn, I won't lie. Some of them may not fit your style. There are fighters that don't fit my style right now and I'm sure there'll be fighters that don't fit your style. That's just the way it be. But regardless, I hope this, guy, I hope this kind of, you know, helps you get prepared. Maybe if you go online and you see a Dalton Smith don't don't underestimate him. He is a dangerous dude. And maybe next time in the lightweight division, if you see people keep going, Ryan Garcia, Ryan Garcia, pick Jorge Linares. I guarantee you will be able to batter that boy if you know how to use him. But I hope this was helpful. If it was, drop a like, subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.